Inuyasha was one of the early 2000s most prominent animes, due in part to its place in the lineup of Adult Swim at the time. Before branching off into a second series called Inuyasha. The final act, it ran for 167 episodes, which covered the remainder of the manga and gave the show a proper ending within 26 episodes. There is a collection of engaging characters and plenty of notable storylines in Inuyasha, but there is one dilemma that fans still argue about to this day, the Kagama vs Kikyu case. Inuyasha is at the center of this polarizing triangle of love, so let's break down and settle this controversy once and for all. Let's look at Kikyu first. One of Kagama's biggest drawbacks is her age. As a 15-year-old, she entered feudal Japan, still essentially a child with a lot to do with maturation. Of course, as the story progressed, she was forced to grow up and address countless hardships, but she sat at a very complicated age nonetheless. On the other hand, when she died, Kikyu was 18, which might not at first seem to be a drastic difference. The truth is that in the span of those three years, a lot can happen. By then, most adolescents have realized the impending doom of adulthood and have begun to evolve in certain ways. Also, Kikyu was a priestess and had to mature far faster than other girls, so she won this category effortlessly. The history shared between Inuyasha and Kikyu was unrivaled. She was his first genuine love interest, and, unlike any other, the two experienced a connection. Kikyu, in fact, adored Inuyasha so much that she offered to help him shed his demon side and become completely human. These plans were however, shattered by the main antagonist of the series, Naraku, who was directly responsible for the death of Kikyu. He disguised himself as Inuyasha and wounded Kikyu critically. Then as Kikyu, he disguised himself and attacked Inuyasha. Later, the real Kikyu used her last bit of energy to seal the sacred tree with her lover. Talk about the history of the wild. The last thing Kikyu perceived before dying was that she had been betrayed by the love of her life. She had no way of knowing that at that time it was Naraku's doing. This chain of events was out of her control, so after learning the truth, she still struggled with her feelings for Inuyasha. Even though her soul was not fully intact, she passionately pursued a future, reaffirming that her love for him was always genuine. They never even had a proper breakup, so she continued to reside within her burning devotion. If it were not for the actions of Naraku, the two would have searched for a normal life together. Although differences in age were mentioned earlier, that was not the sole determining factor for the maturity of Kikyu. In her past life, she was a priestess, tasked with keeping a sacred jewel safe. More level-headed and diplomatic was her natural demeanor. Kikyu knew how to behave under pressure, and when her feelings were pushed to their limits, she only lost her cool. The direct antithesis of this was Kagame. She was impatient, impulsive, and somewhat irritating. Again while age did play a small role in this until she entered feudal Japan, Kagame never had to be anything but an average schoolgirl. That's why in the maturity category, Kikyu outdoes her. Kikyu was automatically far stronger than Kagame, as the priestess responsible for defending a powerful jewel. She was an outstanding fighter, a better protector, and smarter than her reincarnation for miles. What little archery abilities Kagame had were due to the soul within her that resided. On top of that when it came to battle or dire situations, Kagame was notoriously hesitant. In the heat of the moment, which was frustrating for Inuyasha and the rest of their team, she was reluctant. She always waited longer to fire an arrow or two than she needed, which makes Kikyu the ultimate lover of protection. Now it's Kagama's side. As silly as it may sound, her greatest advantage in this dilemma was the fact that Kagama was a living human being. Kagama was a reincarnation of the soul of Kikyu, which left the latter in a zombie-like state. With the Kikyu he knew and loved, Inuyasha was simply never meant to have a future, a fact that the two were incredibly hesitant to accept. With Kagama being Kikyu's rebirth, Inuyasha was better off moving on with the human version, as opposed to pining for the rest of his life after a phantom. It was virtually a two-in-one deal, after all, where the protagonist won anyway. Physically speaking, in this love triangle there were only two real people involved. It was always known that Kagama was understanding, compassionate, and unbelievably forgiving. Maybe she was young and inexperienced, but she had a big heart that solidified her as a favorite of fans. She so loved Inuyasha that she actively did her best to understand the dangerous circumstances in which he found himself. For a long time, Kagama had to deal with being second fiddle in the mind of Inuyasha, yet she always stood by him and their team. Within their dangerous feudal universe, her kind personality was a rare burst of light. Kagama remained loyal and generous, despite different instances of suffering. 
being in feudal Japan implied that Kagama had to leave behind her modern world. Her friends, her family, and her school life were included in this. She sacrificed part of her normal childhood to enter a dark and threatening world, where most of the time she had been out of her depth. In a sense, Kagama's fate was to enter feudal Japan, so it might not have been her choice entirely, but she handled it better than most people would have. She also had to sacrifice her pride at 15 and learn to accept the role played by Kikyu in her life. Kagame, all in all, always had a lot more to lose. It was borderline impossible for Inuyasha to expect a future with her with Kikyu walking a fine line between ghost and zombie. For his own selfish reasons, Naraku crushed that possibility, but that should have been the end of their tale. The pseudo-revival of Kikyu was never going to change that. As an ordinary teenager, Kagame had experienced life and knew what it was like to lead a normal human life. She could give Inuyasha the chance that he and Kikyu had originally chased. This was not only more reasonable, but it was also a fact that could simply not be denied. I think we know that Kagame is the winner here. While it might be irreplaceable to have a passionate romance and an extensive history, common sense and reality are incredibly important. As intense as the presence of Kikyu was in the life of Inuyasha, the only viable option was always Kagame. She was a future on which he could rely, and one on which the line between death and being somewhat alive was not teetering. The age of Kagame may have been regarded as a negative factor, but that also meant that she had plenty of time to grow and learn. Her natural kindness and loyalty were elements of quality that would expand only as time passed. Inuyasha was to be, after all, her feudal fairy tale.